It's time to build the Maxford USA Antonov Van 2, just playing crazy style. And here we go guys from Maxford USA, the Antonov Van 2 available from Gator RC, 50cc, 102 inch wingspan biplane. We got all this stuff right here. Step number one, clean the bench. All right, guys, first step in the book. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to test fit all of our control surfaces and buy our manual here. That's actually the first step that's printed off. Uh, directions seem decent thumbing through there, but there's definitely some things we're going to have to fix. Uh, number one, where they say push a T-pin straight through each hinge right next to the front of the surface. Um, we're, we're not... We're not doing that here in Robarts. We're not sticking T-pins through there. So that's for fiberglass hinges. But anyway, so the secret here is we don't want huge gaps in our control surfaces. Now notice there is no rudder on the bench. The rudder does not apply here. You do not want, you know, big gaping holes in your surface like that but you have to be careful of is how far you should also shove them together because if you make them too tight depending on how the surfaces are built you won't be able to get the needed deflection so there's a couple things i'm using here number one selection of drill bits two we're using a throw meter three some petroleum jelly and some q-tips four um a needle of some kind you can use whatever you want here and some water and then lastly some uh expanding gorilla glue i don't have robarts come out ever i got planes 20 years old this works day in and day out you want to use epoxy go for it doesn't matter everybody's got their preferences uh the nice part about these barbed robart style hinges when that gorilla glue expands it fills in all around those fills in the surface fills in on the back side it's a plug there's no way to pull this thing out so the first thing that I do is these surfaces have such a big gap in there from initial assembly. All they do is make holes and line stuff up, which is fine. We have to make um, chamfers for those hinges to fit. So those little brass things, and I'm hoping that shows up, the, the brass center pin has to be in the center of your hinge point so just barely sticking out is is where you want that thing that whole circle um if for any reason your hinge is sticking out like this then you're never going to get your control surface right and then we want to be able to flex them so that way when we install them that they're all at 90s like this and not like this one because then you got a binding surface so we have to get them installed um I guess that's perpendicular would be the right word to the control surface. You need to have them set in the right depth, but we also have to minimize the gap, but also maximize it to get the right um, flow. So you're going to see me. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a drill bit. And I take the drill bit a little bit bigger than that hole. And I just push and walk around in all those circles. What that allows me to do is to now take this hinge and now I can get that hinge to recess down into that pocket. And that's exactly what you want it to be able to do. All right. So you want to get as much throw out of that thing as you can, but also to have that brass thing be on the center line. Now, as soon as that's done, we're going to take our um, needle and I'm going to use a little bit of water. We're going to take that out of there and I am going to apply just a couple drops two drops or so to the wood the balsa will start to swell up gorilla glue will start to react to humidity or dampness moisture so i give it a little bit to get it going and you do not need a lot of gorilla glue or you're going to have spooge and stuff all over the place i take a q-tip and i work in petroleum jelly into that joint some guys will use a spoon and heat it up and dip it in there i don't care what you do there's a million ways to skin a cat here um, and then I'll wipe a little bit of petroleum jelly around the covering here. And what that does is if I have any ooze out, it can just brush it right off um, with a little pick or a screwdriver or something else. So that's what you're going to see me do here. We have a total of um, 30 hinges to do between the wings, the ailerons, the flaps, and the elevators. And again, once I'm happy, like I've already done this one with my gap, there's a little bit of gap there. 
I go ahead and I throw my throw meter on there. So we're dealing with three quarters of an inch on the ailerons and one on the elevators. Just make sure you're getting enough throw in every direction. Then you kind of know, okay, I'm good with my spacing and my gap and I'm good to go uh, together. So um, we're going to do all of these this wing. We're going to leave the rudder alone and then uh, get that stuff gluing in and work on service. Quick tip when you guys do this, do not just randomly take all the control surfaces off. Only do one at a time because you don't want to mix them up. And then they do have a couple of the hinges cut slightly shorter because of probably a support tube or something else in the inside. But do not start mixing and matching control surfaces. You don't want to do that. All right, again, we're doing the same here, so I'll just walk you guys through one. We're going to do the same for every control surface. And I wouldn't go sticking a lot of that Gorilla Glue in that cup because it'll start, even though I run like a dehumidifier down here in the layer, it will wind up uh, expanding fairly quick. So, got that. We've made sure our control surfaces move and I'm happy with them. We're going to take everything out so everything stays lined up. I'm just going to work this around in some, some Vaseline there. And the first thing we're going to do is just cover around that surface. And that's just going to help in case I have any overages squeezing out. Because you always get some that you can wipe it right off. And again, remember I said don't go and get this stuff all mixed up. So now we're just going to take our hinge. Get some snot on it there. And then work it. We're going to do the same here. Fold it over. Don't get snot all over the place because you want the glue to stick. But don't forget about your sides as well. Because they have those little pockets all right so there's that now we take our needle i use a needle you can use whatever you want you can use a q-tip got some water in there flip it up remember just a drop or two is all you need and with a needle if you squeeze too hard you'll shoot a whole bunch of it in there but as soon as that glue hits that moisture, the thing will start reacting. This just speeds it up. That's all it does. All right, now from here, take some of this glue. I do two things here. One, I get it on the hinges. Two, I get it down in that pocket. So just enough that I, I smear it around that I know it's it's coated and then I push it down you guys can see I'm not I'm not using much and should you get this stuff on anything else it'll come off it scrapes uh, it'll scrape off the monocoat anyway but or the covering whatever they're using I don't know what it is but we want to avoid that because it's just a pain. So there's that. And now I'm going to take my hinge. And just rub glue over it. You don't, you don't need a ton. It's not a crazy amount of glue because they're pretty tight pockets. And you'll already see some squeezing out of there. So it just goes to show you. Trying to make sure everything gets filled in. And we are going to do this for every hinge, every side. And 
And this is what, when you build a balsa model with Robarts, this is probably one of the most time consuming processes, but it's also the most important. All right, from here, we repeat. All right, now let's um, just make sure that we have these pretty perpendicular and that they're all the way I want them. So you can see by that, this one needs to go just that way a little bit. Good, now we'll make sure that they're all lined up hinge wise going down through now if you want to you can go ahead and scrape off any little bit of excess and you could already see how that's starting to foam up in there that's why i said it doesn't take real long for the stuff to start reacting so you want to make sure that you just don't go too much grab a rag and wipe off some excess i'm just using a little bit of alcohol here on a rag All right, now watch your gap. Now what I've also noticed is please make sure that everything is glued the right way, like opening, opening, and that you have the right spacing in there and that you have that one inch of movement that they were looking for. Minimize that gap as much as possible in order to make that happen. And there you go. So now let's do the rest of them. All right, guys, while the glue is drying in all of our surfaces, we're moving on. Now, uh, the wheels fall off the wagon here in the instructions fairly quickly. So step number two, they want you to start to install the vertical stabilizer and test fit. So we're going to do the same thing here we did before. Let's take our drill bit. We're going to indent all of those hinge slots. We're going to get this thing test fitted and ready for glue, but not yet. So there is... Take that one out. I want to go there. Um, there is a string here. This is for the elevator wires. So the elevator wires, these screws will need to come out. I'll put something of my own liking in there. Um, that's just a little bit more blingy. I'm going to run that string up through here when I go to assemble it. I don't want to leave this here, but this is going to get run up through the hole in the bottom and then out here. So I have a way to fish elevator wires all the way through. The ones here are for your pull pull and those screws are going to be for the T brackets, which I will show you in a little bit. So what we want to do is get everything dry fit and get it put on here. And I wanna make sure that my whole fuselage is going to be uh, level. And then we're gonna use a T laser and we're gonna shoot this thing from the back and make sure that our vertical is not tilted one way or another because planes fly really good when you take the time to make sure that they're right. Then the other thing that we are going to do is install the horn for the rudder pull pull system and guys this is one of the most important things here to not aggravate yourself these cables will get crossed so when they come through the fuselage in they will get crossed which means you are going to be using an offset rudder arm now the most important part is if you want good tension on each side of the pull pull this thing those holes have to be on the hinge line if they are off a little bit you're done all right there's nothing you're going to do to get that slop out of it and you get that twang twang each way when you're trying to use the rudder and then you're not getting the full effect of a nice pull pull system so anyway they ask you to start getting the pull pull system ready we're not even going to worry about that let's get this piece up here test fit dry fit installed and see what things look like and what lines up from there we're going to glue the bad boy in and we'll fish rudder cables through at another time i'm not anywhere close to worried yet uh, per instructions about running pull pull and then that ought to give us time to get that glue fully cured up and locked in and then we're going to start getting the elevators and servos put in so um, let's go ahead and do this All right, so um, let's check out our test fit here. So a couple things. Number one, we got the laser 
the leveling laser mounted on the stand. And if you guys, let me see if we can get that in there. I hope you can see where it is. The laser is more or less centered in the bottom and it tails off as we get to the top to the other side. Now that's not completely an issue because see all the tweaking we need? That's just a little bit when I epoxy that in there to make that thing perfect. But if I just let it normally sit where that balsa is gonna sit, it would be tweaked a little bit and then you're gonna need a little bit of aileron trim in order to correct that. So anyway, we're going to just uh, make sure that as we put things, let me shut my laser off. As we start to epoxy stuff in here, I'm gonna apply either a spacer, piece of tape across the top, whatever, just a little bit of pressure just to get that thing exactly where it is um, that I need it to be, to be perfectly vertical. So, um, and then we're referencing that off of nice level bench with a nice level right across the top. So if the fuse is level, this thing ought to be 90 degrees to it. And then when I put my horizontals in and I get my full T, I should have full intersecting 90s right there. So making sure this is right will help to ensure the others are right. And if you wanted to, you could put them all together at one time and make it that way. But do step one right, step two is going to come out right. And again, that string that's in there, we're going to have to fish that up and through here before we place our final in and get it to sit. Now, uh, we're going to get this rudder in here when it's glued a little bit tighter. It'll be here a little bit tighter at the bottom. Things are just kind of rough dry fit. But there is a little bit of a gap up here that's not as desirable. Um, it looks like maybe they shaved a little bit of the rudder off. But again, if if you want to get that picky, <laughs> you can build one yourself because I'm not building this. I, I'm not as good of a builder as from scratch as these people that do it every day. But super happy I don't have to grind out any of the rudder face here in order to get that first hole right here on the hinge line. So this, that was well done. Nice job, Maxford, good um, good deal there. This bag of hardware that you need, you're gonna need to open to get that long control horn out. It has four of these horns in it. Um, those four with these linkage are flaps and ailerons. The last of the stuff here is for rudder. The bag that just has two horns in it is all your elevator stuff. So. That is something to keep in mind. And before we glue, I want to make sure that I see where this tiller arm is going to go. So the tiller arm is just going to get screwed to the bottom. That's not a big deal. I'm going to do that all after I get this thing in place. So this is going to get done now, just like the wings. All right, guys, we have everything uh, test fit here and pre-glued on the hinges and ready to go. So we're going to take some slow cure epoxy. This stuff is going to take overnight 9462 because now we're just going to let all of the wings dry, the stabs dry, this dry. We'll put a piece of tape, hold everything in place, let it cure. Then tomorrow we can bang everything into place. So we're going to go ahead and give a nice coat of epoxy on both sides of that plate. A little bit here, a little bit up in there. Let that stuff all really set up. We are going to sand down the center section. So this should be a nice dull finish when we're ready to go. We're going to install this thing into that slot. Um, and then we are going to... Um, Fill that full of epoxy, and then we're going to install this into the slot. You'll have to clean off the one side. That's just really about the only way to do it. And then uh, make sure that everything relines up with our laser. All right, guys, for this project, I decided to use the King Max as I always do with my Gator RC projects. Um, this is the King Max 4510. So this is a brushless digital high voltage servo. Um, they're also waterproof. So this thing is going to put out over 600 inch ounces of stall torque um, when this thing's put to 7.2 volts. 
So what I like about these things is they've worked really well with all of my projects. I have no issues with any of them to date. They come with a nice selection of arms. There's some longer ones in there as well. Uh, I think they'll be a good fit for this project. And uh, are they more than what's recommended? Absolutely. But I love to have the power to servos and not have to listen them to them be overloaded or whine or potentially have issues where they just don't have enough power for the control surface. So while we're waiting the glue for glue to dry, we might as well go ahead and take advantage of getting everything put together. These are the simple slide the rubber grommets into the side and then the brass pieces will go in from the back. So we got quite a few for this model to get put together. Let's do it. One of the things that I will always do with servos before I install them in a plane, or if they're already in a plane, I will make sure I cycle them before I put it up in the air. This way I know um, that I'm not going to have any failures. These little servo testers are simple yet effective. And the other thing that I use these for is centering. So that way I know that my arms are as centered as I can get before I do some radio programming with these. So we're gonna plug all that in. That right now is on manual mode, so I can control those manually. Put them into neutral. That's where they'll be um, to make sure all the horns are centered. So if I take these and I like that position, I can just go ahead and push those on. And then that way, when I install them into the plane, I know which way they need to go. Now, I don't know um, if they need to be this way or this way. So I guess what I'll do is I'll make half one way and half the other. But now I'll just sit there and I'll let these things cycle for a little bit and just operate. And I'll do that with all of them. All right. All right, in these next steps, we're just, we're, we're abandoning directions at this point. Uh, there's so many things here to discuss that just we have to get done before we even get to what they talk about next. So um, I guess important stuff. So when we look at wing tubes, you'll have a really short wing tube. This is going to go right there in the back. You'll have another one that's about a foot long that one will actually be your front one we have again those screws that need to come out we have our wire there everything is now cured and dry i like the fit i like the placement i like the movement a little bit of big in, in the gap there we'll we'll move on not a not tragic um so when it comes down to the horizontals i've removed the hatch covers again keep them the same so we don't mess them up the hatch covers will have to line up obviously with there again you will find your linkage with two of those and um two control horns so those control horns are for the elevators all the linkages for the elevators and we had a bag full of wooden blocks so what we're going to do is we're going to position this arm in the opening area and you're going to have to figure out which way your blocks will fit your servos and epoxy them to the bottom. Now, when you do this, make sure that your servo is centered. Centered that way and also that way because the elevator is going to have to move equally in all directions. When you epoxy these blocks in, after they're epoxied in and the epoxy cures, I actually drill them and then wick them with thin CA. Make sure that when you epoxy them down, you're going to have to notch the one for the wire so the wire isn't um, getting cut by the block. And then you also have to make sure that you do not put that wooden block right up against the edge because you need that little shelf area in order for this thing to fit in there. Once that's done, we're wicking this whole thing with CA because we're going to run screws down into it and it's not very big. And we are also going to tape off this area and we are going to epoxy in the horns. Now you'll notice what I've done with those horns is I've already sanded down the bottom side. Very important you don't do that. They will pull out. They have holes in there and grooves, which is really nice. But the other thing that I like to do, and we trim that up a little bit in there, once that horn gets placed in, we neutral out our control surface. So we make it in line with the horizontal stab. And you'll notice those holes. 
I make sure that I grind out that wood so when I look down, that hole is directly on the hinge line. And I've done this in almost all my videos. I use a laser right down that crease, so it helps me to see exactly where I need to move that thing to find that line. So really cool trick to make sure things are done accurately, but we need to get to time lapse and get to uh, epoxy and stuff. Let's do it. All right, guys, control horns are put in. Our blocks are epoxied into place and then hardened with CA, especially around the holes on both sides. Um, test fit in there is good. And let me show you something really cool. Again, the reason why I use Gorilla um, Glue, see that on those hinges? If we can get that light to shine in there, you can see that. That is expanding around that hinge. So... That thing ain't coming out. No way. But that's why we like it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and throw in our servos. I am going to go ahead and use the servo screws there. I'm going to put in uh, the regular screws. And then I also put in, my deal is I always put a drop of uh, hot glue over all the screws. That's my telltale that I know I tightened them so that way uh, I can just eyeball stuff later and know I didn't miss nothing, but let's finish this up. All right, so in the course of getting the elevator set up, uh, the linkage here they give you, again, is pretty nice. There's just no way it's going to work. Uh, it's way too long. So we are point to point in a neutral elevator. We're at 54 millimeters. And obviously what they give you is way too long. So what did I use? I used this setup with the Dubro Quick Links and a section in the middle of just 440 threaded rod. And that seems to work just fine. If you're looking for those numbers, um, catalog number 817 from Dubro. And that will get you those Quick Links. And it's so small, they're just butted right up against each other. So nice, big, solid link back there with safety clips. Um, not going to go anywhere. So I do like my alternative. Um, it's just sad that uh, the little things don't work, but is what it is. We're moving on and figuring stuff out. Let's go. All right, so we've made our extension leads for the elevator. We're using Hanson Hobby's locking ends. So now we're going to use that string that was hanging out, and we're going to go ahead and loop it around. We're going to find out what string that is in the inside. We're going to get that started. Now that those are fished through, I can just separate whatever one I want for right and left. Again, they're locking, so that way those horizontals snap right in and they're locked. I don't have to worry about them coming loose. Connector locks or tape also works. Um, I like to be able just to clip them together and take it apart. And then we are going to go ahead and let me take you back here so you can see a bigger view. So each one up here now I'll pull so I know this one is my right and I'll just mark it. Now let's take the elevator half that we made. Click these together. Make sure all your colors match up so you know you made the connector the right way. Get that fished into there. We'll slide this half over. All right, that side's on. Let's do the same on the other. This next step, we're going to go ahead and we're going to install the elevator braces. Now, the elevator horizontal pieces are in there loosely. 
uh, these brackets, you will notice our they're different. So this uh, shaved off part needs to go towards the elevator itself. And these are kind of in the place of flying wires. So they're pretty neat, they're adjustable. And what we wanna do is we're going to use the laser in the back of the plane to make sure that we have the perfect cross of 90 degrees to the fuselage with the horizontal and vertical. And we're gonna put everything together loosely with these again so these are right and left hand side so this would be um let me check here so this is going to go this way um so this is my right side and that would be my left side so we're going to put those in loosely and we're going to install the bolts for the retaining portion now let me show you something i'm going to pop you guys off here so you're going to notice in that tube we have a little bit of play and that's okay with me because we're going to use that play in the tube. It's where the tube, the carbon spar goes through the tube is where you're actually getting that from. So we're going to position everything where we want it and we're going to snug it all down together. Uh, we're going to use the bling that we have here. So that was a trick and I, I try and give him credit every video I do. But my buddy Ronnie London did that to a lot of his planes and... I, I really like it. I think it dresses stuff up, and I get a lot of questions. Hey, where do you get all this stuff from? Amazon, eBay, whoever's cheaper that day. So that's where that stuff comes from. But anyway, we're going to put those in there. We're going to put in our braces, get everything loose, square it up, tighten it down. All right, guys, so check it out. You can see right there, put a little bling. Got some bling up there, that looks awesome. Got our linkage all in, and these supports, again, the shorter edge goes here, so that way they don't dig into this thing. I bent these brackets at a 90 a little bit more, so that way they didn't dig into the fuse when I tightened them in. Loctite on those. Do not put Loctite on the little ones because they have self-locking nuts on there. But anyway, um, what we did again, we used the laser back here. I'll show you that in a minute made sure that everything was squared and then tighten stuff up. And there's a good amount of adjustment here to pull these and tighten them the way you want to. So on the top of the elevators, so I know my sides were equal. I just used some rods. We have the self-leveling 90 degree laser. That thing goes right up the rudder. We come with the laser. Hopefully the camera picks it up, but you could see that shot all the way across um, both of my horizontals right there so i know that this is as square as an orf is gonna get baby that thing shouldn't need a whole lot of nasty trim and then we come up here we made sure the fuse was level side to side and then front to back so nothing wrong with being square let's go ahead and get the front gear on now there is an absolute ton of stuff going on here guys um I did a dry fit to see exactly how this step went because the directions um, don't really outline things and I want you to be careful of some stuff. So let's talk about what these things are. So these pieces slide over your wing tube. Then you have two of these pieces and you see how they're balsa on each side and then there's this notch out that goes this way. So what's going to happen here is they want you to glue these there. So put all the rods in so you know exactly how everything fits and lines up. Don't guess. Use a Sharpie, and we're going to mark right along this thing all the way around. And I am not going to cut as big as the Sharpie. I'm going to minimize the area inside. These aren't like super structural pieces, but we have to glue them in place. So we only want to cut the covering. We don't want the covering loose all the way out at those outer edges that we trim away from here. So go in a little bit, make the area you cut out smaller than what you outlined. Then we're going to go ahead and epoxy those into place like that while everything is kind of lined up. Don't use so much that you epoxy your rods in there that would be a no-no now when it comes down to the landing gear here's the way all this fits uh again the directions um the directions just aren't good that's just the way the directions go but it's okay we'll figure everything else out and that's why you got just playing crazy in the videos this is not super difficult stuff so i'm not worried about the directions these pieces here need to get epoxied into place 
those big brackets. I wouldn't do that, and I'm not going to do that until those pieces are on and glued in place. And then everything is put together and I'm happy with it because we have a lot of adjustments to make. So we're going to epoxy those into place, epoxy those. And this piece right here needs to get screwed in to there. They know in the instructions a spring needs to go in there. I don't have no spring. So tomorrow we're going to go to the hardware store. We're going to get two little springs cut them put them in place but i could see where that's needed because this thing's going to articulate probably a lot and i don't want all that stress just completely banging in there i i want a spring to give it a little bit of extra help so it's not sacrificing that wood now when it comes down to these things uh it took me a while to figure out which way they're going to go but the tapered part is going to go like this against the wing bottom because that's where they're going to sit so the secret here to get these on is you got to slide them in place first like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, use canopy glue down on the inside uh, you can use some hot glue just to hold it but i drip a bunch of um canopy glue down in there it dries clear you're going to get a little bit running down in but don't don't go overboard with it but enough that canopy glue is going to work nice for you and hold that into place so those need to be on beforehand and then your wing is slid in and gets held in with a screw on the inside of there so once we install the shock we have to put spring right in there in that piece and then uh, we'll tighten everything up then once I'm happy with everything is adjusted, we'll glue everything in and uh, let it dry. Two more tips here, guys. Number one, leave these nuts just a hair loose. So you want this to be able to articulate a little bit. And then also work these shocks really good before you put them in. Um, mine were really stiff and hard to get. Don't just grab the plane and push down because you're going to bust everything. So on a hard landing, when these jar, they're going to have some of that articulation. Before you cut this, take a heating iron and make sure you press that covering down really good so nothing comes loose in those edges. All right, so I slid some Vaseline on the rods so they don't stick. Um, keep in mind, any pieces you cut off, save them. Because if you ever need a piece of patch material, now you have it. And it's a perfect color match instead of trying to find the stuff. But anyway, um, if you have a bar clamp big enough, that would be ideal to go side to side. I just realized I do not. So I'm going to set it up on this end, put some weight on the other end, take a... A glance over it see if you have any epoxy leaking out anywhere and if you do take a little bit of alcohol on a rag get that stuff off of there because tiggers love to bounce anyway um, I got springs so let's take a look time to get landing gear on uh, tonight we want to get on main gear and tail gear now in order for that to happen we had to have springs so in this landing gear, remember the long axle here, that's all one big piece. That's going to be front post. You're going to take the bolt with a lock washer. That's going to go through here. The spring is probably bigger than what they recommend, but um, we'll see how that fits. We're going to apply some Loctite on those threads right there. And then finally the washer on the back so the spring's not digging into the wood. And then we ought to be able to tighten that and give that a good amount of tension, but still give it some movement. And then that way it helps to prevent that bolt from wanting to back out with not only the lock washer on there, but the thread lock as it dries. And we want that washer pressed against the wood. Now the other thing I did is I went ahead and I filled this um, support area here with thin CA and let that wick into everything. You could probably fill that up with um, 
maybe some epoxy or something on the backside if you want to preemptively do that before you glue these on. So for me, I'm flying blind at the moment. It may have been a good idea as a little bit of reinforcement in there. Um, just put a little bit in prior to gluing those bad boys on. But I soaked mine with CA and uh, between those mounts in here, we should be okay. I mean, those things are pretty sturdy. So um, we're going to get gear on, get the tail gear on and see what time it gets us to. All right. All right, guys, right or wrong. Um, you know why the, the road is littered with dead squirrels, right? Because they couldn't make a decision right or left and you dance around and squeesh. Um, I'm not gonna squeesh. I made a decision and I'm gonna go with it. After looking at all the directions and feeling what I think makes sense to me and uh, the way things fit best, the solid axle I put in the back and the short one I put in the front so that way as the regular landing forces go to push back, you have this straight rod here um, kind of holding everything from wanting to collapse back. And again, we have the spring, the washer, and then I tighten that up with a lot of Loctite just so it's behind the flush of where the wing's gonna sit. So that gives that a little bit of articulation. And then this thing only goes down, you gotta leave some clearance in there and you're going to notice that there's a spot where it's tight and then you go too much it's loose i'm just going to go up just enough where it's tight and then we're going to drip not on the shaft but down in the housing we're going to dip some uh, drip some canopy glue down in there to get that thing all locked into place so that way they stay but uh ultimately that's what i went with so lock nuts on the inside those on the inside these on the inside um Let's see how these hold up. There's a lot of stress just on those little tabs. And this is a fairly big plane. So we're going to see how it holds up in uh, the maiden and landings and everything else. Maybe even test it out with a little bit of pushing once it hits the ground. But let's get the tailwheel on. All right, so for the tail wheel, you put the second leaf so it would be on the top side. So that way, if you have a hard landing, you're pushing against the extra leaf on the back side there, right? Um, before I fully tighten that down, I did mark everything in centers, measure to make sure it's center there and there. Um, same thing with here. We made sure that center drill fill with CA, a lot of thin CA. Put this piece in first, then we're going to do this piece. Now, they come with these easy connectors. The easy connectors will go here and here, and then we can go ahead and then the springs will go between the easy connectors. So here's your tail wheel installed. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of uh, canopy glue and probably a little piece of silicone tubing up there to prevent this from ever falling off um, as soon as my tail wheel and rudder pull pull are all hooked up and I know that my spring tension is set then I'll take those little barbs and bend them over so they won't come loose and then we're also going to put something on those nuts to make sure they don't come loose but otherwise tail wheels in gears on let's get this baby on its legs Two more tips here guys number one leave these nuts just a hair loose so you want this to be able to articulate a little bit and then also work these shocks really good before you put them in um, mine were really stiff and hard to get don't just grab the plane and push down because you're going to bust everything so on a hard landing when these jar they're going to have some of that articulation let me try and set you guys here so you can see. But yeah, these things are stiff. But they move. So, a little bit of give there. A little bit of give there is better than a little bit of give in the balsa wood. But anyway, I've had enough for tonight. Going to bed. Catch you tomorrow. Alright, let's get these wings ready to go on. Um, we're going to do the work on both of them here at the same time. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to install the servos in the servo bays. Make sure that, you know, we have our um, servo arm lined up appropriately with the correct horn. This is the set of four horns that we're using. Same thing we did with the elevators. Sand down this piece, tape off here, and then we're going to epoxy all those in and try and test fit everything before we glue it. Make sure that that's up on the hinge line. Um, we're also going to work at installing all these dummy pieces in here that look like they were probably on the scale one, the actual hinges for the control surfaces. Notice here that I have one that is painted and one that is unpainted. So the laser cut leaves that brownish on the edges. And I just took a paint pen over them. And it's really simple and easy. It's just a Sharpie paint pen. Um, and then we're going to make whatever appropriate leads we need to go through the whole wing. And we have this center section. Here is the center section. So the wires will have to get put through there and into here. Now here's the crazy part. Let me take you guys around. If you look at the instructions, if you look at the instructions, they say this is permanent to the fuselage. Well, we have um, fittings that are going to need to go in there, dowel rods. Um, but then your wire every time would have to get fished through there, then fished through here and down. Here's a suggestion. We're going to put all of those pieces in together as they're supposed to be. But I'm thinking we're going to just make this whole top wing one assembly. I'm going to epoxy everything together. And here's the other thing. Um, you can't really see, but around that dowel rod right there, you'll notice that there's no wing tube, that there's placement for three other carbon rods kind of in a triangle shape. Let me pull this out so you can see it. So we're going to see how that holds up as well. Um, I think having all this upper wing one piece would be to our benefit. But that way, the only thing you ever have to really take off is those two screws for the lower cabanes. And that'll be it. So um, in order to figure out all of this, we have to get all the servos and stuff done. So let's do that. And then we'll come back to the decision making process for the center. <laughs> well, I'll be boot scooting. Did you ever see that? Uh, you watch them on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. How would they know? How will they ever know? They'll never know. They'll. That's this plane. Want to see a magic trick? Look. So we talked about a little bit ago, this top wing support and how this thing gets attached. Obviously, we're going to put dowels in the front. It's going to go in there and two bolts are going to go in the back. Once that happens, there's no place for nothing here. Like you want your switches, you want your fuel valves, everything got to come out of the side. And like, if, if you permanently attach the wing on there, there's no way to get back in this plane unless we start cutting access doors and stuff. And I thought, you know what? I don't know if it's possible for this plane to ever even be electric without doing a lot of extra work. But how would they know? They'll never know. Watch. So if we have this, which they say in the instructions is permanently installed. Watch. Here's the magic trick. The magic trick. Poof. This thing was so well sealed at all the edges and sturdy. It's got uh, eight magnets in there all the way around. Two in the back and six in the bottom. But this thing sits right in there. And I just thought, you know, that they cut those seams because there was no way to conform all those windows in that that canopy in that plastic so um 
In order for this thing to come on and off, we have to be careful how we put the dowel pin. So now you got plenty of room in there. You want to do electric? That's great. You want to do some switches and valves in there? That's great. So that's going to help me a, a good bit because I don't like putting stuff on the outside of the plane. And this piece here will actually just be bolted on just like they say in the instructions and you can just let it there and now my two wing halves on each side can come off with a support and i'll show you how um, that concept works but anyway that's really cool and that helps me a lot so now we got to put those dowel pins in so here's what i've kind of done and figured out we'll take this thing back off and we'll set this over here to the side um, you have to be careful with these dowel pins. You can see not only did I taper, I roughed them up. Um, believe it or not, that's going to be the part that goes inside of that opening right there. All right, so these things, I'm gonna use the complete flat edge and they're gonna come all the way through here and we wanna adjust these so that way when they're in there, they're perfectly flat and flush. Otherwise, when you go to put this canopy on and off, I thought it would be nice to have the canopy, because there's holes in there for this thing, um, I thought it would be nice for this canopy to notch down in, but there's really no way that you can flex this down into those and then get the front down. And there's no way to get the front down and get the back down if those things protrude through. So ideally for that wing support, uh, conceptually, that would be really nice for that thing to be able to do that, but um, it, just, it just doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave mine flush, just like that, and I am going to CA all of this to make sure that that area is good and hardened up, and I'll probably come all the way down into here literally harden all of this stuff and uh, maybe even put a little bit more epoxy here on the back side anything that i can do to help support this upper structure uh, i'm going to take advantage of that now these i roughed up because these will get epoxied into the front and we'll place that whole assembly in again so that way these squared off pieces there if you will um, sit flush so that's what we're going to do let's go let's go get to it All right, guys, and that wrapped up this section of the Maxford USA Antonov An-2. Again, 50cc biplane, 102-inch wingspan. You can find this and many other Maxford USA models over at www.gator-rc.com. Link down in the description below. Gator also carries, besides Maxford, some top RC models, Seagulls models, and many others. So check them out, see if something fits your need or desire. With that being said, uh, it's Brendan here at Just Playing Crazy. You guys are just playing crazy for always hanging out and watching. I appreciate every one of you um, do me a favor if you liked what you saw hit that thumbs up button if you're going to hit that thumbs down do that baby twice for me like share subscribe all that cool shameless plug stuff those likes really help out the channel a lot don't forget to check us out over on the official facebook and instagram just playing crazy pages with that being said i wish you guys happy flights peace out